Some new missions are inbound for Warhammer 40k in the February White Dwarf. It seems that the Maelstrom of War missions might be returning. Hello and welcome back to Warspecs Tactics, where today we're talking about Maelstrom of War missions. First with a bit of a chat about what they are, how they function, and some of the good things and bad things about them. And then the news that Games Workshop is making a version of them for 9th edition, which will be found in the February White Dwarf. So Maelstrom of War was one of the main two ways that you could play 8th edition Warhammer 40k. Their book missions were divided into Eternal War missions, which were more aimed on killing or holding objectives. And then Maelstrom of War missions, where you drew cards from a Tactical Objectives deck, and then you'd have to try and achieve certain objectives from your hand as the game went on. There was usually a decent sized deck of 36 cards, often with faction specific objectives, and the cards would come up in a random order, with orders such as kill this amount of units for these victory points, capture this objective, hold this objective for a turn and then your opponent's turn, or some more fluffy and faction specific ones, such as say Imperial Guard killing an enemy unit at long range with artillery. In general, at least compared with the very basic Eternal War missions that came out at the start of 8th edition, I did prefer the Maelstrom of War missions. Rather than just being missions where you had to hold the objectives at the end of the game, or stand on them all game long, this actually meant that you had to work on a variety of different objectives, usually having a balance of killing the enemy and holding points. I felt like as the edition went on they maybe got a little bit more dated, though in general they made most of the 8th edition missions better as they went along with chapter approved. And while playing in 8th, I did take part in several tournaments that combined both these objectives and the Eternal War missions. It made the scoring a little bit complicated perhaps, but I quite liked the way that it gave you multiple options to pursue for victory. I think the Maelstrom cards did tend to divide opinions. Some people really quite liked them, other people really just didn't want to touch them, and didn't really use them the entire edition long. One fair criticism that I think was levelled at them was that they maybe made the game a little bit less competitive, as while usually the balance of cards would favour the player that had better board control and unit killing ability, that wasn't always the case. Every so often you could have a game where the cards just completely favoured one player over the other, say where one player draws all the cards for taking objectives in their own deployment zone, and the cards ask the other player to try and take those same objectives that are on the other side of the board. It did mean that any one game could have the cards really decide the victor rather than the player's skill arguably adding more randomness to any sort of competitive game. Honestly though, I do think for anything other than the absolute top tier of competitive play, Maelstrom cards were pretty fine. Sure, they did occasionally present some slightly silly situations or weird orders coming through, but they made for fairly interesting games. In any case, like them or hate them, Maelstrom cards appear to be returning for 9th edition, and they're going to be out in the February edition of White Dwarf. They're being published in beta rule form, implying that they're not necessarily the finalised version of the missions, and they're welcoming all player feedback to the FAQ team for any obvious issues or balance tweaks that they might want to make to them. I'm going to guess because of this they're going to be released in the February White Dwarf now, they might collect feedback over the year, and then maybe publish them as a more finalised version in a chapter approved later down the line. That would be my guess. Often things that they publish in White Dwarf do wind up being in actually some of their core rulebooks at some point, though typically with a few revisions. We don't yet have the full details of these, no doubt they will be revealed in time. It looks like they've got four pages of tactical objectives, and it'll be quite interesting to see what method they go for picking them this time round. They had a couple of iterations of Maelstrom beforehand, where you could drop a certain amount of cards before the game, or you could just literally pick half of the cards to go into your game with, and while I think that these were good for balancing games a bit better, it could mean that you had a bit of a slow start early on, deciding which of the objectives to go for and which ones to leave behind. In addition, they've got 6 deployment maps and 6 missions for any type of game size. The Maelstrom missions look like they'll be the same no matter whether you're playing Combat Patrol or Onslaught. And there's also a page of Maelstrom stratagems that you can spend your CP on. I suspect much like last time this will be manipulating them, maybe paying a CP or two for dropping one and drawing another. I'm certainly going to be interested to see how Maelstrom looks this edition, and I certainly wouldn't mind giving it a game or two myself though my prediction at this stage is that the Maelstrom missions in White Dwarf aren't going to see a very wide adoption or use. Generally the missions that really take off throughout the player base are the ones from the main rulebook, or the ones from publications that most people are going to want to buy, like the chapter approved books that updated points costs in the past. Not everyone's going to be able to get a copy of this White Dwarf, or necessarily take it around to each game, which I think is going to hold it back a bit, and to be honest in terms of balanced competitive missions, I think they've done really quite well with the current ones that they have. I can't really see more mainstream events or tournaments adopting these over the standard ones that have come out of Games Workshop. Having said that, while I don't think that everyone's going to be playing Maelstrom editions this year, I think for any given player or group these could be an interesting thing to look at. 
They will certainly give you a different flavour of how to play Warhammer 40k. I'm sure to meet the challenges of Maelstrom, different units and combinations will be powerful, so it could provide a bit more of a tactical challenge, and there might just be an interesting alternative to playing standard book missions if you're just looking to pit two armies against each other and roll some dice. So let me know what you think of Maelstrom missions. Would you be interested in giving them a go in 9th edition, or do you think that they should remain buried with 8th? I'll be interested to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. If you've enjoyed the video and you'd like to keep up with any changes to the Warhammer 40k game, feel free to subscribe to the channel, we have regular videos coming out pretty much every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying my videos on the channel, I would just like to mention one way that you can support, which is my Element Games affiliate link, which is down in the video description. If you live in the UK, Element Games is a discount retailer that gives 10-20% off Games Workshop's models, and if you buy anything after clicking that link, a small amount goes to help support the channel without costing you any more whatsoever. It can just be a way to help out if you were thinking about buying some Warhammer anyway. Otherwise, if you live in the USA or Canada, I do also have an Amazon link as well. Again, that works in pretty much the same way. Click on that and buy literally anything whatsoever. A small amount goes to help support the channel while not costing you any more. A massive thank you to you guys who have been using those links. It really does help keep the channel going. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.